Hi everybody, welcome back to The Average. Today I'm drawing Harry Potter foods, three of them, and I've already chosen them. Today I want to kind of use, kind of use, I want to use the Delta Black ink, which is kind of nice. I was reviewing and looking at different inks to use with watercolours, and apparently like, this is one of the best ones. But I did some tests, and you have to wait like 10 minutes for it to dry. So obviously you guys won't see that, but yeah. I need to know the lesson, and I have a lot of fear because once I ink everything, I want to know that it's straight inked. Okay, because what I want to do is do ink and then watercolor on top, which makes sense to me because then I can rub out the pencil lines. So, <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm doing that, and I'd be using, I'd be using, I'd be using, why did I say that again? I'll be using this dip pen. It's been a long time since I've used one of these because I used to use these all the time in university I even did my whole graphic novel using just a dip pen and ink and I really enjoyed the way that that felt because I think what I did was like eventually the nib kind of bent into a position that it felt really nice to be able to use it that way. I know that sounds really bizarre but if you're using one of these nibs every single day for hours on end um, it kind of feels good. Everyone's like no you bend them and then you have to get a new one but actually no I, I kind of enjoy that more when it's slightly more bent to my shape. I also feel like the positioning of this pen is really strange because the opening um, where you put the nib is at an angle whereas the one I'm used to using is like straight forward one if that makes sense and so this one took a little getting used to but yeah I I'm used to it so as you can see the first thing I'm inking is the pumpkin pasties which I have drawn out previously and I think I just I searched on online like about Harry Potter foods because obviously I've read all the books but it's been a while and I wanted to get like some different ideas of what I could draw I do just really like the rough texture that you get with nib and ink this watercolor paper is obviously a little bit toothy so it's kind of hard to do like a straight line. I think I like the way that comes out, sort of a skew characteristic style and it kind of reminds me of like Quentin Blake a little bit when he just does this really scratchy rough uh, nib and pen ink kind of drawing and then watercolour on top. I think that's a really cool style. Obviously it worked out for him pretty well. Yeah, so I just wanted to try something different and I do miss the nib and ink pen. Like I said, I used it a lot when I was in university and this one's a little bit different so it is kind of a learning curve to get used to it again. The best way to get used to something is to practice using it, right? So here we go. And I've got to remember that I need to wait 10 minutes for this ink to dry. That's the problem because I'm very very impatient as people who have watched this channel for a while will be aware of. I just like to get stuck in, I don't like to wait around for stuff so maybe this is the wrong art supply for me to use but hey let's let's give it a whirl shall we? I think a lot of people who do comics use inks and just brushes to make lines. I remember when I was in university there was this guy on my course and he was really like oh everybody at Marvel uses brush pens, blah, blah, blah. you should use those and I was like I use whatever the dang heck I want, thank you very much, like, what is this, why are there such rules to, like, I love how I'm getting annoyed about this all over again. <laughs> it's been a few years to death, calm down. It wasn't even that annoying, I don't know why I'm, like, cross, but it was this guy who's just like, I know everything there is to know about comics. Again, drawing with, like, nib and ink kind of feels like you're giving it that handmade feeling, because it feels like you're scratching away something. Everybody, no doubt, is going to tell me that I'm using it completely wrong. But as I said, I think you can use, you know, art materials in whatever way you want, even if it is, even if it is wrong. If you make something you like and it works, then how can that be wrong? Oh yeah, guys, words of wisdom for you coming at you through the screen. So these are pumpkin pasties and this is pumpkin juice because that is obviously in the book as well. I don't know if they're mentioned in the same sort of sitting because maybe that's too much pumpkin going on for your meal but I put them together because I thought it would look nice. Okay, those are the pumpkin pasties. Now to let that dry for 10 minutes. Let's get to painting these pasties then. So obviously pumpkin is orange <laughs> and when it comes to my painting process, I am super messy with my paints as you can see and what I do is just mix stuff on my palette and use it and then find different colours so sometimes it may lead to my watercolours getting a bit 
muddy, but I just think that's my process. I just want to dive in and do different stuff and find colours on the fly and have different elements going into the piece. And I just kind of go for it. So if you guys have a problem with me mixing colours on the fly, I'm sorry. I'm sorry in advance. And yeah. So I just want to paint and see how it turns out. I don't want to do it too realistic because I like this style of kind of like nice colours with this line work. I think the last time I drew the foods for like free foods from books and I did it kind of in a semi-realistic style but for this I want to do a little bit more cartoony or illustrative if that makes sense. I just I think it's more fun. Obviously the ink has dried quite nicely so I can confirm that the ink is waterproof. You, I know it said it on everyone online but sometimes you never know and what you have to do is just wait for it to dry. Now they look a little bit shiny which is kind of what pasties look like. Inside it is really dark so I think I'm gonna make like a little dark colour to go inside it but I'll wait for that to dry a little bit. So it adds a little bit of depth to it I think. It's always so annoying when you put down masking tape and then you peel it off and there's like one little section that didn't actually cover or didn't work and then yeah that's annoying. Okay, I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll take the masking tape off. Next up, I drew Ron's corn beef sandwiches that he has on the train when he first meets Harry. And Harry kind of feels sorry for him because obviously Ron's mum has made him these sandwiches to be a bit thrifty and can't get anything from the snack cart. But obviously Harry is just coming to money. So he buys loads of treats. But I thought, you know what, it'd be quite funny to, to paint these corn beef sandwiches. I really enjoy drawing these foods. I think it's just really satisfying and it's interesting because it's kind of fan art but then in a sense it's not as well because it is coming from like my own imagination um, but then it's also like taking something that I love and painting it. Obviously, I really love Harry Potter. I think a lot of us do. It's, uh, I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably like Harry Potter uh, or you just like watching me paint, I guess. <laughs> um, let me know if you love Harry Potter. Like, if you do, what's your favorite um, book? I think my favorite one is actually the third one. Oh, I've just spilled ink here, great. Mm, maybe if I water wash it away, it might. This will either work out great or horrible because it's not completely water. Okay, all right made it horrible never mind that's what happens guys we make mistakes it's just kind of like a smudge maybe i'll just make it look like it's the paper underneath the sandwich yeah so harry potter quite big good books aren't they <laughs> i do obviously really enjoy reading that's why i want to bring more kind of book content to this channel ah oh, i made a mistake Hey guys, I don't know how I managed to duff this one up so royally, but I think what I'm gonna do is just do like a wash right now and then hopefully the ink won't be dry and it will not look that bad. And if it does, it kind of could be like, oh, that's what the paper looks like. So we, could, we can make a word, guys, right? Let's hope. Uh, let's just bring this to the edge and I will paint a little bit more black here, cover up that line. I have a feeling that this might work out for the best. I don't want to go too close to these lines because I know that that will smudge it. I've got to be very careful here. Got to be very careful here. Ah! Okay, that was fine because the paper is... The sandwich paper is... That's how it looks. Let me just blot the ink a little bit. Yeah, I will go closer to this when it's dry and just leave it at that for this one. And I'll sort out this line down here because that looks a bit silly. But once it's dry, I think we can go back and fix this up a little bit more. Maybe this is too red, so I need to add like blue or something to make it like a cooler brown. Hmm, hmm, interesting. Why did I make the two slices two different colors? That doesn't make any sense. So we can see here with the paper how that's gone horribly wrong. I'm gonna add more black around here now. Or maybe just like blue. I don't know what paper is blue, but paper that you wrap your food in, I think it will look cool. Let's just pretend that the Weasleys have blue paper at home and they wrap their sandwiches in it. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is add some more black texture around the outside of it. I'm not sure if I prefer this style to kind of the lineless painting style that I did before. I think it it works. It's quite it's it's fun to do, but I don't know if it looks as cool. So corned beef is kind of like a pinky pinky meat, but it's also quite brown. <laughs> a lot of browns going on today. So what we're gonna do is just paint it pink and then 
go over it in areas I think it would be darker. Which is making the sense, you know? Just making sense here. Today on this channel, we are making scent. I mean, sort of. Sometimes I get a bit carried away with shading, so I've got to be careful. So I'm always like, a little bit more shade here, a little bit more here, like. Okay, I'm gonna add some black now with the ink. Wish me luck. Let's get all go down here, here. Oh, look, it looks kind of moldy now. Mmm, hmm, not a huge fan of this one. Although the sandwich is looking quite cool if you ignore all the black around it. Okay guys, I found a little bit of a solution to my conundrum of this black void. So what I want to do is just go over it with white poster paint and then like you can still get the textures from underneath and then I think I'll just do the details of paper and I think it will work out because it's kind of working anyway. In the end, it worked out. That looks much better. And now I'm gonna just do some details. On an illustration I've done before with Harry Potter on the train, so obviously like these hash browns appear, hash browns, these corned beef sandwiches appear on a train, on the train. So I, in my drawing of the train, I did it all quite red and luxurious. So I think I'm gonna do the background like a bit of a ready, yeah, a red background, so just to make it individual to the other ones as well and to hint that it's on the train. I think that looks quite interesting. The next one is sherbet lemons because we all know that Dumbledore is partial to a sherbet lemon. Lemon? I love sh sherbet lemons. Um, no, but honestly, <laughs> I really like sherbet lemons as well. I think they're really good. If you haven't had them before, they're kind of these hard boiled sweets that taste of lemon and then in the center of them is some like powdered sherbet. So once you like either suck down to the powder or bite it, you get this like kick of um, sourness and it is delicious and I think they come in like powdered sugar as well so they're just really really terrible for you but delicious as well and I am partial to a sherbet lemon guys I really want one now <laughs> yeah so about the drawing I wanted to have just the foods in the drawings but with the sherbet lemons, it was a little bit like, well, they're just gonna be like circles or lemony shapes of boiled sweets and nothing else. So I wanted to have like maybe a little jar. They've just been spilled out onto the table. So I did that to just like make the illustration have a little bit more to it. And then I thought because they are Dumbledore's like favorite sweet, or one of them, I wanted to have a phoenix feather on the table just so as if it's been, you know, discarded down next to these um, sherbet lemons because it's a little nod to Dumbledore who obviously has a phoenix in his office. I mean, obviously they're all bright yellow, so I don't know why I've drawn these so small as well compared to the other one. That would be my one takeaway for this piece so far is that composition wise, I made this a lot smaller than those ones and I think that's because in my mind I was like okay I'm gonna put a jar here um, full of the sweets and then the feather so I was like okay I need to make everything a lot smaller it just turned out that the whole composition is kind of a lot smaller all right done no um, <laughs> I'm gonna add shading to it but for now I'm gonna draw the phoenix feather and then I'll do like the bottle and then I think I'll do just like a nice orange hue ready hue around guys I think we've managed to do a painting without any brown on it it's pretty crazy I need to add some brown. I think what I want to do for shading for the sherbet lemons is just like maybe a light orangey colour and then it can just add a little bit of depth to these. I'm not sure what colour I want the background to be. Didn't test that colour at all. It's fine. Okay, um, if you can see the background is kind of like different shades of purple and like obviously that's because I've been mixing it as I go and um, each ratio of the, the blue to red is slightly different each time and that's kind of why I like mixing it on the fly as well because you get kind of like a mixture of colors and I think that's really satisfying to look at. Okay guys I'm gonna say that these are the final drawings otherwise I'll just be here forever so the only last thing to do is to get that peel on. Oh yeah, ah, the crispest line. No thank you, pa pas Pasto. No thank you. Pasto loves this tape, so she's a bit crazy for it. I don't let her eat it, obviously. She just wants to eat it. But hey! Oi! The last stretch of peel. Okay, that is the final one. These are the final 
pieces. Let me know which one is your favourite. I think actually in the end, my favourite one is the sandwich because I think even though we had this giant mistake, I think it kind of worked out. But let me know. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It really helps how the video does. And yeah, so I'll see you next time guys. Thank you. Bye.